talked about was you have a couple choices. You can either go gray or you can go mill spec. It's going to be one or the other because that's what you're going to find in the market. This is a this is a this is gray. My belief is absolutely stay gray. Don't go mill spec for any reason at all. Um, it does nothing but draw attention to you, and makes you target. Um, going gray, I can just this is the only thing that's tactical on it, and I can take this this schmuck and I can tuck it in one of the corners, and now I'm just look like a student walking down the street. And the more I can look like a bum, less they want anything to do with <laughs> So, <clears throat> interesting, personal paperwork. Mine's not in here right now. What we found was in going back and reviewing everything that I had. I just have a misunderstanding sure. on new on this. You say go gray or mill spec. What are you talking about? That's a black bag. Gray means, gray means, yeah. gray means that I blend in with everything. I look civilian. Oh, okay. I look like the guy, I look like the kid going to school in college. Oh, okay. This is military. That's mil spec. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Mil spec is just a military specification. It's a bag built to withstand a oh, nuclear okay. device dropping right on top of it. <laughs> and yeah, they wear really well, that's mil spec. These wear extremely well, depending on where they're made, but most of them, do, but I mean, walk down the street with that and walk down the street with that. Who are you going to see? Who's got the good stuff? This guy right here. Because <laughs> he spent more for this bag than I did on this bag. So, anyway, my philosophy is great, period. Don't draw attention to yourself. Just be part of the woodwork and walk away. Back on personal paperwork, I want to just couple a couple things that Rob talked about. I was going back through our paperwork and just making sure we have everything. Flipped open our passports. Guess what? Expired. Expired three days ago. Oh, oh man. Holy shit. <laughs> I would not have found that if I hadn't been going back and looking at what I need to do in my bag. So we're redoing those now. So um, so I talked about last week, we talked about EDC, and I use a four foot ladder as an example. If you stand in front of the ladder and you're flat on your feet, not on the step, you're flat footed. That's when you get caught flat footed. First step, it's your EDC. That's what you have on you. That is only designed to get you to this. The next step up the ladder is to get you to this, to your bug out bag. And the top of that ladder is going to be your 72 hour kit. Or however you want to play that. Again, prepping is personal. You can kind of put these things however you want to do it. But in, my, in, in, in our example, we have a 72-hour kit, and they stay in each car. Inside that kit is also a backpack that's gray. So if we need to take that items out of that kit, put them in a backpack, and get on a, and walk away, we can do that. So we have options. We also each carry a possible get-home bag. This is kind of an everyday bag for me. I'm in and out of this thing because it does more than just emergencies. You go out, to, um, go out to the park for the day. You get a headache. It's aspirin in here. I can pull out my aspirin and take an aspirin. I have things in here. I have bugs, a bug spray. I've got just little things that kind of make things easier for me. So this is also just another storehouse where you can get things. But this is also part of what's in my bug out bag list. So as I move up that ladder, as I move up those steps, I'm taking these items and I'm not duplicating them in a bug out bag because they're here. These just meld into my bug out bag. So you're not buying things twice or three times, even though you should have three and everything. Oh. <laughs> um, and it saves you some money and it's keeping things simpler. The simpler you can make preparedness, the more you're going to do it. So <clears throat> real quick, um, so I kind of talked about bags a little bit. And like I said, Lisa and I both have that, our 72 hour kits in our bag because she may be in the bay teaching. And if she's teaching and something happens, she can't get through the pass. I want her to have her kit. She can, she can anchor down wherever she's at. And I know she's okay for 72 hours. Um, we also keep them in the vehicles because where we live in Red Rock, if we have to evacuate, and last year we had a fire boom hit right up above us, just north of us, Lisa, immediately had the evac list out and was barking orders. I was running. Um, and quickly we were getting everything together. 
our bug out here is already in the cars. I don't even have to worry about that. Now I can get the pets dealt with. I can get the rest of the house dealt with. I can communicate to my neighbors. I can do whatever. I know the gear is there. And now we just put the other things together so we can be ready to leave. And uh, work like a charm. We saw holes in it and we fixed those and uh, we moved on. Something that I do differently is that I'm a, a volunteer radio operator with Aries. So there may be a time when I get a call out in an emergency and I mean, to, I mean they need me to go to this peak and set up a, a two meter station and man it for three days without support. You're on your own. And so my 72 hour kit is actually an expanded kit. I have a restroom, a tent, I have a large tent, I have a lot of other things that you normally wouldn't have, but I've incorporated because that's how I operate. How you function is how you're going to do your bags. Um, so we talked about we talked about being great, we talked about the bag. And you can kind of pick whatever you want. There's when I when I decided to get a gray bag, I kept I went to REI, I went to all the stores, looking at different bags and going, nah, shit, no, nah, nah, nah. Because you've got to find the one that fits you. Fits how you're going to use it, and fits what you're going to put in it. And that's probably the thing that Dammel took the most time. So, I want this bag to hand, take care of me for 24 hours. However, what I'm relying on is I'm relying on finding water and finding shelter. I'm not going to keep those with me. I'm going to throw this on my back. This, with 24 ounces of water, weighs 23 pounds. I can throw this thing on a hump down the road. That's a different story. <laughs> so what I want to do, my plan is to find shelter. If I need to find somebody's woodshed, if I need to make a shelter, whatever I need to do, I'm going to do that. Now I have some things here to help me stay warm but I'm going to look for shelter. I'm going to look for water. I'm not looking to treat water or um, purify water. I'm looking to treat it with tablets because this is my vessel and this is all I'm going to have for a while. Again, 24 hours. I just need this to get me by for 24 hours. So I'll go through some of the items in here. They're on a list. So we'll try to keep them in some kind of an order. A stainless water bottle, that's 24 ounces. If you don't know and you're using a water bottle, check it, find out how much it really has in it. Because if you're gonna purify this, you've gotta put the right amount of purification in this, depending on the volume of your container. So if it's a little larger, a little smaller, and you don't have enough, you got a problem. Good thing to do too, if you have an engraver, an electric engraver, come up on the neck or something and engrave how many ounces are on it, because you will not remember how many ounces are in this thing unless it says it on it. Um, real quick, I've, I have just found these useful as hell for a lot of different reasons. They're very cheap mm -hmm. and I just tie them on the bag and they're here. I keep on locking meaner. Um, I never know when I'm going to come into to use for it. Now this one has pouches on the outside and I chose them for specific reasons. This is probably the most convenient pouch and it's the most acceptable, it's accessible. And what I keep in here for items that I might need to get right now. If I have someone injured, I need these right now. I may need to clean up something. Hand lotion, hand uh, water pure, uh, hand sanitizer, excuse me. A light. I can grab this, put on my head, now I can work on the rest of my pack or whatever I need to. This is bank line, if you haven't seen it. This is our heavier line. This is our thinner line. This is what Jerry likes. Both serve a purpose. Very small, very lightweight. Um, no pad. This is a Maxpedition pad, but it's waterproof paper. And pencils never run out of ink. And you can always sharpen them. So these are just items that I keep that I may need to get real quick. Um, the other item is um, individual first aid kit. One thing you want to talk about is there's mold steel in here. There's things to help take care of my feet. I have an extra pair of gloves right on top in case I need them. Um, but basically, this is a kit that's only designed to take care of me with small and minor injuries and abrasions. 
for a day. It's not designed as a full medical kit. I'm not going to. I'm not going to work on a sucking chest wound with this unless I just jam it in there. <laughs> <laughs> I happen to like the hand wipes in the field um, when we're hunting in Colorado and stuff, and you've got blood on you or whatever you got on you. Snow is great. If you don't have any snow, guess what? These are great. Um, so that's that kit. This one has some side kits. One of the things I carry is I keep a neck knife. This is just a handy, it's an everyday utility knife. Throw it around my neck if I'm doing something. I don't need my main knife. I just need something to do some projects or something. <coughs> if you haven't seen these, these are really handy. Mm -hmm. Titanium, fork and spoon. They weigh literally nothing. I think this thing would float if I threw it up. <laughs> Here's another little one. Um, this was actually given to me by the NRA, and it's got some tools on it and such, and a can opener. Handkerchief. Now, if I want to be found, this is the one I'm going to use. Good signal device. Extra batteries. Now, most of my batteries that are in here are uh, going to be um, either one-time use, but they're going to be rechargeables as well. A uh, pair of gloves. You would be amazed how much stuff you can actually get in one of these bags. Sun hat. And that's that compartment. Now here's something that I started doing. This is a perfect use for your pill bottles. This is salt and pepper. And by the way, these don't leak ever. Mm -hmm. This is actually a juniper pear peppercorn meat rub. Mm -hmm. If for some reason I'm out and I've got some meat or something or I've got a rabbit, I can actually use this, put a nice glaze on and put them on the fire. Dinner. Trenching mm -hmm. tool. Whoever's been in the Sierra Club knows what this is used for. Mm -hmm. But you can use this for anything. You can dig a pit to lay down in uh, for a bed. You can help put together a wall, our rocks loose, whatever you need to do. Talk about communications. This is, and by the way, I really like these bags. This is Eagle Creek. They make a line of small bags. I think they're probably the most cost efficient that I've seen. And there's a radio. Multi-power sources. So it's just a little American Red Cross. It's an Eaton. It's all little channels because news is everything especially in a disaster. This is kind of a sundry pack. Um, knife sharpener. This is a diamond ease lap sharpener. It's probably the best thing on the planet. Small towel. Um, talk about a stove. This is the only stove I have. It's an Nesbitt stove. And with this in my cup and my coffee packets, mm -hmm. I can make a cup of coffee wherever I'm at. If you like tea, bring your tea bags. But bring whatever you like. Uh, I've got extra fuel packs right here. This is for the stove. And it's also completely full of fuel as well. Just set that on the table. You set your stove right on top or your cup on top. So this has a lot more. I've got some more wipes. Um, for water purification, I'm going to just use tablets. That's all I really want. And I'm not going to carry a filter. That filter unit's just too large to do it. I'm just going to use tablets, and that's going to work fine. I've actually treated, <coughs> I treated water with tablets that to smell, <laughs> you would not even come close to drinking this stuff. It was all I could get, and it was out of public camper. And it was awful. And I treated this, I let it sit the right amount of time, I shook it up, it smelled perfect. And I drank the rest of the water and it was fine. But it's amazing what these things look like. What is that one? What did you say that was? This is, this one happens to be potable aqua. I, potable aqua? Yeah, I've used their stuff before and I like it. Do they have it here? You have potable aqua here? I don't think so. Okay. You have padded an MP1 so, don't you? Yeah, we do have tablets, though. We don't have tablets. Okay. 
there's a variety of manufacturers. All of them really work well. Just <coughs> pick one that you like and go with it. That's why I go with the light straw, light go taste of that one. Yeah. The problem is that the life straw has been advertised and still is advertised as a purifier. Yeah. People talk about it as a purifier. There was, Fox News had somebody on, and I know who it was. Fox News had them on and they had the purifier and the gal was saying, my gosh, I could just, if I got in trouble, I could drink water out of the Hudson. And the guy agreed with her. If you drink water out of the Hudson with a life straw, you will freaking die, or you will want to die. <laughs> because the thing, that, the thing that you're going to deal with in that situation is not, is not E. coli, it's not all of the, the bacteria, it's the viruses. Virus. Anytime you get people together in an area, you will generate virus. It just happens. And so that is when you need to step up to a purifier. But I like the Life Straw, I have one. I just don't like how it's been advertised. Um, food, so I have... I want to be quick and lightweight, and I like clip bars, and I keep them in here, and I rotate them out. Nice, I usually eat them, and then I have to put them back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> damn, where'd those go? Damn, they're so good. Um, gallon Ziplocs, very handy. Um, really inexpensive. Now, this is where people save a lot of money, and they think they're really cool. This is a, this is actually a mil-spec poncho. You can buy the plastic ones, and you'll buy them, and you'll buy them, and you'll buy them. You'll buy this once. This thing will last forever. It's a ground cloth. It's a shelter top. It's a raincoat. It's whatever you want it to be. But these are incredibly good. And uh, what's that? It's a it's a it's a regulation poncho. Only it's completely made out of nylon. So it's ripstop nylon. Military pot. So this 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 will not tear. This will not fall apart. What's the name of it, though? Um, you can just look for them online. I don't know if this one has a particular brand on it. What would you say? Military poncho. Military poncho. Do you have it? Uh, I have a quote later. Not the uh, back on the fuel there. How oh. often do you change your fuel? Because I know some of that fuel goes bad after a while. This stuff, I have not had it gone bad on me. Um, you had any history with it? Uh, I've used Traxide and uh, the other one, and they stayed good for me. I mean, I, Traxide, if you, go to the, uh, if you go to the surplus store and you find Traxide fuel tablets, they're from the, what, 1950s? Mm -hmm. they, still burn. they still burn. Yeah, I had some that was similar to that mm -hmm. that I've had for like 10 years, but I went to light it off and it won't light anymore. Just make sure that, um, for me, I would probably just use it, and then if I had a problem, replace it all. But use it periodically. I mean, this kit is not to, this isn't a kit that you buy and you put in the closet, and you go, wow, if anything ever happens, I'm gonna go get that kit. No, you've got to build a kit and use it. I mean, this thing should be second nature to you. Oh yeah, I, I know where those aspirin are. They're, they're, like, they're like right over here, and you dig them out. Um, that's the biggest, big, that's the biggest problem I have in this store with the customer that come in here. They buy this gear, they buy this equipment, they throw it in a closet, and they go, oh, the zombies come over, break it out. I'll break it no, out. No, right. use it. And, and some of these but, kits, when you break it out, you're going to get a poncho that wholesale for 24 cents. Mm -hmm. worth about that. It's not even worth that. I mean, it will last you five minutes. So there are certain places that I would say buy quality. Don't buy the most economical thing you can. Buy quality stuff because it's going to last. Won't the plastic ones make you sweat more underneath? Yeah, they do. Yeah, it's kind of like your rain gear. Yeah. Um, I went to Alaska and I hunted caribou for 10 days. And I was wearing my Gore-Tex, which is all I buy. And the other guys in camp came in with the J and H stuff that you'd use on the deck hand for a boat. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was about an hour hike up into this area where we were glassing for caribou. The guys were swimming, literally. They were trying to get the stuff off because they were absolutely soaking wet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
middle of Alaska soaking wet's not good. Yeah. No. No. Never. Yeah, I was in uh, New Zealand hiking about 10 years ago. Yeah. And we didn't bring our wet gear with us. We were part of mine. But we put black garbage bags over us. Yeah. <laughs> like you said, about an hour later, I was more wet underneath than I would have been if I'd been walking yeah. in the rain. Yeah. And actually, I used something like this in Alaska. Um, when you're out there hunting, I have rain gear on, but I've got a rifle, I've got a pack, I've got things with me. Right. And in Alaska, the weather will come in and three minutes later it's pouring, you know, I could count this on a flat rock. I mean, and it'll be like that for 10 minutes and then it stops to get sunny. Right. Take this, throw it over myself and my gear and just sit there and wait 10 minutes. It's all done, shake it off, roll it up, put it back in the pack, go on with my hunt. A um, few other items. Um, this is a Garmin GPS. I believe in GPS. I also believe in a compass and a map. But this is something to practice with, and this stays in my kit. Um, when I hunt, this goes with me. But anything that I take out of here, I use my checklist, and it goes back in the back. Which Garmin GPS do you use? This one is the uh, CS60 CSX. 60 CSX? Yep, this one right here. Garmin changed their antenna system um, a few years ago. This was one of the, I think, third, this was the second or third product line that came out after they changed it. This antenna is so good, you cannot believe it. Well, because they have so many different lines now, I wanted to see what you use. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of different ones out. Yeah. And that's 60 CSX, Garmin? 60, 60 CSX, yeah. As a color screen. Um, we talked about maps, paper maps. Indispensable. Now I keep one for California because I may have to roam over there. Um, I hope not. Um, <laughs> but just having road maps, and we will have the same road maps. If we need to communicate and say, well, what about here? Go to this point. You see that on the map? Well, no. Okay, well, look over here. We're looking at the same map. So now we can talk intelligently looking at the same thing from two different points. Yeah, that's smart. We're, we're all going to get your same map so that we can all <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> but the same thing's noted. Um, this, this I carry because I carry a weapon. I have an obligation, I believe, as carrying a firearm that if I need to shoot somebody, I need to maybe have the chance to save them. That's what this is for. Um, this is just real simple. It's actually only three items. Um, this is a T-Mac tourniquet. I have some quick clot, and this is an Israeli battle, uh, dressing. battle dressing. This is probably the most heralded dressing on the planet. Um, it was developed, and it does a tremendous amount of job about creating direct pressure on a point without having to hold it. Mm -hmm. This will do it for you. And where did you get that? Right here in the store. Yep. Okay. He should carry. There, like I say, there they have they came out and uh, right after that they were the greatest thing on the planet and no one has. I'm sorry, what did you call it? What is it? Israeli dress battle dressing. No, but battle dressing. But Israeli so battle dressing. Israeli battle dressing. Comes in different sizes. Okay. I think they make a small and make a medium. four and six. Hmm? Four inch and six inches. Four inch and six yeah, inch, that's it. Okay, good. But apparently that opens up to a lot bigger pack. It does. It comes a lot bigger, and what it does is it will actually wrap <coughs> around itself and come back and, and crank down. So you actually can tighten it and put pressure directly on top of that. I don't know why I didn't really think of it. Okay, food-wise, I've got the bars, and I keep one field-stripped MRE. The only thing in this thing is the entree, the heater, and the cracker. That's it. I don't need a lot, but having one hot meal, pretty big. Okay. So you can pick whatever meal you want. This one actually came from here. So, um, yeah, pasta with marinara. This is actually pretty good. You like your entree. What I was saying, this is a field strip. It has just the entree, the heater, and a cracker. That's it. That's all I really need. Is that as good as the spaghetti or the rub? <laughs> <laughs> right away or later? <laughs> so this is an Israeli battle dressing. 
And the way it's designed, this is the fulcrum. So this is what you can use to crank the pressure down. This goes through and you pull it down. You can make this as tight or as loose as you want, but it does a tremendous amount of job. I wouldn't leave home without one. Um, this particular bag has all my short 550 cord in it, little pieces. These might be 10 foot, they might be 20 feet. They're little ends and I put them in there. Uh, I keep a very small roll of duct tape. It's one inch wide. This is a really nice item to have. You can, it's surgical tubing. So I can actually make this a tourniquet. I can siphon fuel. I can hang somebody. I mean, <laughs> help somebody. That was a help somebody. Um, has a lot of uses. It will tie down tight. You can really wrench it down if you need to hold something. And uh, it's a great sling shot. Yeah. yeah, you could use it for a million different things. It's not cheap, but um, another case of get the good stuff. Huh? Another case of get the good stuff. Yeah, exactly. Get the good stuff. Don't Where did you get stuff. that small roll of duct tape? I've never even seen it. Uh, actually, probably. Probably Home Depot. They had a short, I think that's Gorilla Tape. They made some really small one inch wide rolls. Okay. They make them also with patterns if you want to <coughs> you know, set a fashion statement. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, little bears. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a personal kit. Again, I like the bags because things stay organized. I know what's in the bag. Um, this is going to have all the little things that I might need deodorant. I keep um, body pins. Safety pins. Safety pins, sorry. Safety pins, they come in very handy for all kinds of little things that you can't imagine. Um, floss, aspirin, bug repellent, chapstick, all kinds of things in here that are in my toiletry. So there's floss, toothbrush, things like that in here. Um, I keep a length of rope, and this is static rope. It's not climbing rope, it's just some static rope. This is probably 30 feet in a beaner. Uh, I have had to anchor things off before and comes in handy. This is the cup I use. This is indispensable. You need to have a roll of this. This is the cup I use. It's a glacier cup. Um, does a real nice job keeping the heat away from your hands. This sits right on top of the Espit stove. Put my coffee in, fire it up, and in probably 10 minutes I have coffee. Also hold the flip it a little while. So Jerry talked me into getting this container which I thought was a better option. This is my entire fire kit. Oh. So I can start fires 57, well, that is my issue. You got 59, I have 55. Um, <laughs> but it's got little film canisters. This is cotton balls and Vaseline, the go-to fuel. Mm -hmm. um, I've also got some different ways to do it. I've got uh, fat wood, I've got sparker, a couple lighters, uh, matches. Um, anyway, it's, it's my entire kit. Now, this is my sleeping option that I've chosen. This is a bivy bag, bivy sack. This is put out by, if you don't know Adventure Medical, they put out some outstanding equipment. Um, top rated stuff, I use their first aid kit, but they make some very, very good stuff. They also make another product called Heat Sheet, and Heat Sheet is, performs better than the space blanket does. Um, it's more comfortable. Uh, they use a material on one side, and uh, I, I really like it. But this is the whole thing, and this is literally a sack. It unrolls, and you climb into it, and you can, you can huddle down and cover up. So this is my option for one night. I'm going to find some shelter, and I'm going to make one, but that's my option. So I don't have to carry a big bag. In the wintertime, I have a bag in the vehicle, if, and that's where this kit is. If I needed to get to it, and I chose to take the bag, I just hand carry the bag, the sleeping bag. Where did you, where did you get the baby bag at? This one I probably got out of Cabela's. So you can get them online, okay. get them through Amazon. Uh, this is the little Gerber hatchet device that I found, and uh, I'm going to make a better sheet for it. But this I carry in there, uh, small cutting device that. I could probably do without, I just like having it with me, because I have a main knife that will do that. That's this guy right here. Uh, my main knife also has an extra fire kit and sharpener in here, and it has a second magnesium block 
and ferrule rod inside that. So what I generally do is this is uh, a knife that I carry when I'm hunting. So I actually have a fire kit and sharpener here for me when I'm in the field. And I carry extra things with me, but this is always there. The other thing is I carry these. These are the little glow bracelets. If you have kids and you want to keep a hold of them and it's at night, you want to keep track of them, put a bracelet on them. They have a really good time with these and you can see them in the dark. <clears throat> and this is the last thing that I carry. This is, my, this is my goal zero. And this has a charging panel, has a battery pack, has, I have extra batteries. I can charge my cell phone directly off of this or all my batteries and um, used it before and it works extremely well. And I, this one I really do like. How expensive is that? Goal Zero is not cheap. Yeah, Goal Zero is expensive, yeah, yeah. but it's very, it's good uh -huh. quality. And I think it does well. They had those both at REI and Sportsman's Warehouse, yeah. but they had a whole kit or something. I think all we need was just I well, this I one, like how small that is. Yeah. This one came as a kit. So here's the solar panel. Nice. Okay. And I believe this one is like seven watts or something. Yeah. I think it's seven watts. And what do they call that kit? Or is there this this was actually a kit and it was at Costco. And, oh, and the buy on it the buy on it was they were introducing these and the buy on it was so cheap I I had to buy one. <laughs> Are, do they still have them at a good price, you know? Yeah, I haven't seen, I, I watched, but I haven't seen the same price that they had when I bought this. Mm -hmm. But they were, they were introducing the lines. What? Paul has one out here that's not too bad. Um, oh, okay. But it, like I say, it, you, know, you know, I can show you this a little bit closer, but it has done everything that I've wanted it to do for me and uh, came through in flying color. So um, with that, that's all I really have. I got a little marker and this is, this is my pepper spray that I talked about last time is EDC. It, if I don't wear it on me, it's generally on this bag. So I have another option, so. That's awesome. And the pepper spray, that's for any kind of situation, people or animals. Or people whatever. or animals, whichever ones I, I think I, I need to deal with. There's a couple things that I don't have is that I don't have an extra pair of shoes. Uh, and I think I went over that for the gals. I think they're gonna need to Guys usually have the right shoes, but the gals, you know. <laughs> Our heels work good. Our heels don't work. I don't think so. I don't think you can run fast enough. The only thing that I think I may add to our kits is now that we're both hams, is I think I may get a bow bow fang for each of us and put it in here, and I think that would give us better communications than using MGRS, which whatever that says on the package, divide that by. 0.01, that's what you get. It's not 27 miles, it's 2.7 feet. So the, uh, I noticed I didn't see uh, like an extra pair of socks or something like that. I don't have those in here right now. I a seasonal clothes bag in my truck. Oh, okay. And like Rob does, I rotate that. So in the once we get through winter, I'll glean that out and I'll put more summer clothes in there. Gotcha. And I have an extra pair of shoes in there and I have that stuff. If I felt like I needed to go get it, it's there. So I, we have personally decided to make vehicles the base, the basis of our preps. And because they're mobile, they're away from the building. If the house burns, my preps are still good. So, uh, that's all I have. If you have any other questions, I'll get out of the way because I'm taking too much time. Thank <laughs> you.